Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Joy of Coding with Harry Wolf, your faithful host. That's me, The Joy of Coding. I mean Harry Wolf. I'm not The Joy of Coding, although I do enjoy The Joy of Coding. I'm just Harry Wolf, though, so that's not to be confused by that itself. Uh, ignore that preamble. Don't know who that guy was. He's a little bit tired. Had a late night last night, early morning this morning, but I'm here to talk to you about some more TypeScript. That's why you're here, or maybe you're here about something else with type with JavaScript, but Right nowadays, we're talking about TypeScript. So if that is what you are excited about, then you, my friend, are in the right place. Past two episodes, we've been delving into getting our environment set up with TypeScript. The first video was about what is TypeScript, a question that I ask about myself every day. Who am I? What am I doing here? What does it all mean? Does it all matter? What is it gonna mean to me? The previous episode before that was about getting your environment set up using just TypeScript CLI itself. TypeScript is both a type checker and also a transpiler. Kind of a two-in-one combo pack, if you would. This episode is going to be furthering that adventure and getting your environment set up. And instead of using TypeScript as the transpiler of code, we're going to use everybody's favorite JavaScript transpiler, Babel. Babel, 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 babel is the uh, de facto transpiler for the web, except if you use TypeScript. So I guess that's a little bit redundant, but ignore that. Babel, recently with Babel 7, had a support to be able to transpile TypeScript code into a JavaScript code. And the main blocker from then not being able to do that before was being able to actually parse and understand uh, TypeScript code. Uh, Babel takes your code, turns it into an AST, an abstract syntax tree, which is, you know, a way that machines understand your code. And before Babel 7 and the plugin system and architecture and changes that they made, uh, they didn't really actually understand when they had a function call and there was types of information there, how to actually parse that. So now with Babel 7, you can actually use Babel to transpile your TypeScript code down to JavaScript. So if you have an existing JavaScript application that's using Babel, you want to start getting using to TypeScript, there's a very low barrier to entry to start having it be in as part of your tool chain because you're already using Babel as your asset compiler, your JavaScript compiler. This is just a new plugin that lets you just keep using, keep leveraging that existing system and start using TypeScript. The one caveat, the one caveat, the one caveat is that Babel has no understanding about types. It can parse it and know that they are types, but it has no knowledge about what that means. That is the wheelhouse of TypeScript itself. Uh, TypeScript then is just a type checker. So in this world, we use Babel. Use Babel as the transpiler from TypeScript to JavaScript, and you use TypeScript as just a type checker. Uh, it's kind of similar to the way that flow type environments usually work. They have a transpiler to go from flow type to JavaScript, and they have flow on its own doing the type checking. That's the preamble about what Babel is. Let's show you what I mean so that you can not do it with, man, I am so overtired, not good. So where we left off in the last episode is our basic index.ts file. That doesn't change in the world of Babel. This is our TypeScript code, still works. We still have some lovely built-in type checking with VS Code, not delving into that in this episode. But for our purposes, we can still use TSC to transpile our code to JavaScript. That still works. If I delete that, go back to here and rerun it. Still working as good. But for our use cases, we actually want to get working with Babel itself. And to do that, we're actually gonna install some NPM dependencies. And before we do that, it's a good idea to actually get a package JSON file uh, working. A new npm init y. Just say yes. Just make a package file. We have that going right now. And then from here, we want to actually install those two packages that we were told to install here from the Babel's Getting Started website. I mean, I just go to Babel's website, go to setup. You can say how you want to use Babel. For our use case, it's just the CLI. So let's run that and install it right now. Let's see how long it takes if I need to vamp for that long. Nowadays, it's a lot fast. Let's skip to the end. Okay, cool. So we got those two packages installed. And let's actually uh, test out the Babel CLI to start things off. 
We're gonna run this command, npx babel. npx is a new feature of uh, npm that lets you easily call CLIs from uh, the command line rather than having to do like node modules, .bin, whatever. You can just do npx to install, to use the built-in CLIs that are provided from these packages. Uh, we're gonna use babel, which is the program. And we're gonna say that the, you have to actually tell Babel that you're using a non-standard JavaScript extension. Uh, by default, Babel only looks for .js. Here we're telling them to also look for .ts, which is um, our TypeScript file. And here we're saying the output destination. So let me actually delete this to make sure that we have a nice little uh, pristine state. So now if I run this, I get a lovely, uh, hard to parse error. Uh, but essentially what this means is that when Babel is trying to parse this file, it got real confused. It said, why is there a colon here? JavaScript doesn't have a colon there. Why did you put a colon there, Mr. Silly Programmer? I have no idea what you're talking about. And that's because we haven't taught Babel how to understand TypeScript files. And to do that, we will use the Babel preset TypeScript plugin. <gasps> Woohoo! Uh, that is a plugin that gives Babel the knowledge on how to parse TypeScript files. Here we're going to install that extension here. Let's skip to the end. Sweet. Now what we also want to do is get Babel working with this plugin. The recommended way to do that is via a Babel RC file. So let's just do a little uh, creation of that. We have that over here. I'm just going to copy and paste this file into here. This is used by Babel CLI by default. So now, if I go back and rerun that same command as before to actually uh, compile the .ts file with Babel, success! Babel is happy. Babel knows what I'm talking about because I've installed this plugin. And here you have the effectively uh, raw JavaScript file from the TypeScript file. That's all that Babel does. And this is great. However, uh, Babel don't care about types none. So again, if I were to change this to be uh, one, which is an incorrect type for my argument here, I run this, it says, sweet, I got you, baby. I don't care, I'm doing it. Uh, you are not protected at all. And that's why if you'd wanna actually have this set up to still have typings of TypeScript, you'd still have to use the TypeScript CLI in some capacity. Uh, what you'd actually do is you'd use tsconfig, and here you'd actually use this nice little uh, option called no emit. Essentially says, TypeScript, run your type checks, but don't actually create any files. So if I run that right now to use that new file, I'm gonna get a lovely little error that is being told me by the TypeScript CLI, and this was not touched. And that's kind of like the hybrid approach. If you use like Webpack or something like that, there's plugins that make it a little bit more enjoyable, but uh, that's kind of uh, how you get up and running with Babel with TypeScript. So that's, that's it. So if you have an existing large JavaScript application, you wanna get working with TypeScript, the easiest way to do that is to just extend your Babel installation to add, give it knowledge of TypeScript. It involves installing the plugin uh, and migrating your files from .js to .ts. And then you need to also add the type checker um, as a peer process, but one that would actually be included in the actual same pipeline of things there. That was you getting up and running with uh, Babel and TypeScript. Uh, no diggity, no doubt. Hopefully you found that fun. For the rest of these videos, I'm just gonna use TypeScript CLI itself. I'm not gonna really worry about Babel. I just wanted to make you aware that, that was an option because the more options you have, the more choices you have to make, which leads to choice paralysis and nothing ever happening at all. Oh, that's not the best thing to do, but that's kind of what I'm saying. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I will see you again next week with a brand new video about your topic that you will never guess what it is. Uh, it's TypeScript. I'm just talking about TypeScript right now. That is the thing that um, I'm trying to learn more of, so I'm gonna learn and teach you along the way. Uh, if you have friends and coworkers that are interested about JavaScript and learning, uh, even about TypeScript, tell them about this channel. I will give them a special shout out if you um, ask me to. Am I going to forget those words? 
who listens to these end credits? Is this just me rambling incessantly? Hopefully they're at least entertaining me just talking to you while I neglect sleep and other responsibilities, but that's not your problem, that's my problem. I'm definitely rambling for too long. Uh, thank you for tuning in, faithful and beloved viewer that you are the camera. See you again next week.